Hi, I'm Randy Altman with Post Perspective. We're here at Seagraph 2016, and I've got Maxon's Paul Babb. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, you guys had some news for the show, big big news. You have a new release, uh, release 18. Can you talk about um, all the new features? Uh, well, I'm not, I don't think there's enough time to talk about all the new features, but yeah. No, there's a, it's, uh, it's actually one of the most feature-rich uh, releases we've had in a very long time. Uh, I'll preface that with Maxon has hired a lot of programmers in the last couple of years, and it takes a couple of years for them to get into the code and start making things, and so we're starting to see the fruits of their labor, and it's very, uh, it's very exciting. But uh, uh, R18, I'd say on the on the top of the list would be the Voronoi fracturing, which um, short just lets people blow things up and carve them up and smash them, and you know, 3D guys love to blow things up, 3D gals love to blow things up, so. Uh, so there's that. Uh, they added motion tracking to our uh, to our tracking uh, tools, so you can you can track objects within the motion tracker, replace objects with 3D or whatever you want to do with that. Uh, there are a lot of new shaders for great rendering effects. Uh, they added something called a thin film shader, which allows you to add that little uh, rainbowy effect on, say, bubbles or water that looks like it has an oily slick to it, that kind of thing, and which also works well for the surfaces of cars, that type of thing, for layers of surfaces, so you can have that kind of uh, maybe oily surface or even fingerprints kind of look if somebody's been touching your car. Uh, and uh, there's a new knife tools for modeling, so they've added a lot of nice little precision tools for modeling, and the nice thing about them is you can uh, draw the lines or create the cuts that you want to make before you actually cut them, so you're, you're creating, you're, lining them up, getting them where you want them, and then you can uh, settle them when you want to. But that's just the, kind of the highlights of what they have in there, but there's a lot more. And this is um, September release, correct? Yeah, we always, yeah, no, shouldn't say we always, but yes, it'll be a September release. <laughs> shouldn't say that on camera. <laughs> Uh, so here at the show, and you guys do this all the time, you have a very um, big user community who is pretty active and you have artists at the booth. Um, do you want to talk about some of the guys that are at the booth right now? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it, it's This is the best part of my job is is having bringing the artists out to the show and getting to see the kind of work they're doing. Um, we have, uh, actually, we have Trevor Kerr who just did another demo showing off his Star Wars fan film that he created. A tremendous amount of work for one person in a very short amount of time and it's film quality. It's just an incredible piece of work. Uh, another filmmaker, uh, Carlos, he's done a, he did a, a piece, that's a full, a full length feature film on his own. Um, all his own effects, shoots it himself, very small crew uh, out of New York, does some amazing work. Uh, we've got uh, medical animators, uh, we've got guys showing off the new features of R18, uh, we've got motion graphic artists, visual effects artists, uh, pretty much run the gambit of uh, anything you might be doing with Cinema 4D so that uh, the audience out there, because we stream live from the show, so even if you're not here, they can watch the, the, the presentations online uh, now while we're doing them, or they can watch them on Cineversity after the show. Uh, so we've got something for everybody, and, and the nice thing is, is we ask them to, but they, you know, we don't have to ask, but they all offer up some interesting tips or techniques that they used to complete those projects. So it's not only exciting to see the work they do and kind of the process they went through, but to learn some new little techniques to get that work done. Well, I wanted to uh, have you dig in a bit deeper to Cineversity and tell people what it is. Uh, it's a pretty robust um, area to go for tutorials and tips and stuff like that. It's getting more and more, yeah. Cineversity, um, actually, it's a, to give you a little history, Cineversity was started out as sort of a support for our tech guys. Uh, so you get a lot of frequently asked questions that come in through tech support, and it's, it's hard to explain over the phone sometimes. So we would have them start making videos. And then they could say, oh, go watch this video on Cineversity. And over time, it just it just grew and grew and grew. Uh, we, ha we would have a studio say, geez, I wish um, it, you, know, you could have this kind of tool which might not be something that Cinema or the Maxon development team would put into Cinema, but it's something that a technical director or a, would program, a little utility, a little plug-in, a little something like that. So we started creating some of those and started adding those to Cineversity to assist other studios. You figure one studio wants it, maybe another studio needs it. So we, we started creating some utilities and tools and resources. Um, packages of, of uh, reflective textures and those types of things. And um, yeah, it's up to, I think we're well into 2,000, 2,500 video tutorials. Um, there's, I think, 40 or 50 plugins or resources that are on there. They're basically free to Cineversity subscribers or uh, people who have an annual subscription to Cinema 4D. Now, what about partners? You guys have a ton of partners. Can you talk about some of the other companies that you're integrated with and working with? 
Sure, uh, we're working with, uh, well, pretty much everybody in the industry, um, uh, NVIDIA, AMD, uh, we're partnering with the substance folks, actually the algorithmic folks, we, uh, that's another feature in R18, the uh, substance integration is built into R18, so we've been working closely with them on that. Adobe is certainly one of our most important partners uh, in that, uh, you know, everything is very much integrated into the Adobe suite, because that's where everybody works. So uh, we make a great effort to make that workflow extremely smooth. But we also work with, um, try to work with other 3D packages because we recognize that uh, every production studio uses the tools that they need to get the work they're doing done. And, and actually, uh, actually, another feature of R18, uh, we're supporting Open Subdiv, which is a uh, algorithm for uh, the smoothing surfaces, and it's developed by Pixar. And it makes it really easy or easier to transfer assets from one 3D package to another and get the same type of rendering surface that you were getting with your other 3D package. Any other, for release 18, anything else that you could think of that people should know about? Top of my head, is there anything that I missed? Well, they could go to your site and find out? They certainly can. They can either go to maxon.net and there's a nice landing page showing off all the features. And of course, on Cineversity, we always put together a nice a series that, uh, a series of tutorials that really briefly, in five minutes or so, overview all the different uh, highlight features that are on there. And uh, actually, the week after SIGGRAPH, until we launch in September, we'll have a new, little tip, there'll be a short little tip for an R18 feature every single day up until we launch. Very cool. Yeah. Thanks for coming by, Paul. Thanks for having me. Have a good show. What's left of it? You too. Randy Altman, Post Perspective.